So before the break, what we did was we, uh, I asked you to get a, uh, a picture, and so I downloaded a picture from Pixabay, and um, you can add your picture anywhere that you'd like. We have some ability to, let's say, put a picture on the left side and put text on the right side, or we can put a picture above text, below text. We have some ability for that, but not as much like a real magazine layout. That's always been the challenge in web design, uh, how to make our websites look like magazine layouts, because those are often amazing. We've got a picture and then the text follows the edge of it, like the contours and such. It's really hard to do in web design just because of the nature of it. Let's say, very simply, I want to add a picture at the end of my document, at the end of my post. So I'll click at the bottom, and I've got the button at the top that says Add Media. So I'll click that Add Media button. I currently have a picture as an example, but most likely I'm going to need to upload. Notice on the Add Media, it's not just pictures, because I can, I can insert media, I can create a gallery, I can put in a tweet or a YouTube video. I have different things that I can put into my post. If I want any of these to work, I'm going to need to copy and paste the link to the video or the tweet or whatever. But I've got a picture that I downloaded. It's on my desktop, so I will click the button Select Files. And I need to find my picture. So I find my picture, I'm going to upload it. And this takes us into the concepts that are in my handout here. I downloaded a picture and I uploaded it, but I didn't really pay attention to one of the items that I have in my notes. This particular picture that I've uploaded is called cookies-390592 underscore twelve eight. That's not the best file name there. It's not as bad if it was simply 390592.jpg. This still at least says cookies. So this is not a totally terrible file name. Unfortunately, you cannot edit the file name in WordPress. You have to change the file name before you upload it. So It's better to think about that and plan it before uploading it, but I just wanted to show you that you have some features that are not available on WordPress. One is to be able to edit file names after you've uploaded them. So I should have renamed it right here before I uploaded it. So what I would have to do if I really, really, if it was a really terrible file name, I would have to uh, delete it and upload it again with the correct file name. But I'm going to say at this point, this is not completely terrible. It does say cookie. Uh, so a better file name might have been, you know, snickerdoodle cookie or Victor's Bakery snickerdoodle cookie. It might have been a little better, but it still says cookie. I've uploaded it and it's on my server and I have other things that I can work with. Question? They are linked. So if you delete them from your media folder, your media screen, they will then delete also from the posts. So if you're running out of space there, are you on like a Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever? You might be able to see how much it costs to add a little bit more space to your account. And they really, nowadays, server space is really affordable. Maybe for an extra $5, they'll give you an extra terabyte of space. I don't know. So check with your provider and see how much extra space you, you can get. Yes? Um, so to change the name of the image, instead of having to delete it and, and go back and upload it again, 
if I scroll on top of it, there's like a little pencil. And when I click it, it says um, alternative text. Can I just change it while it's already on there? Like, let's say I have like 10 blog posts and I don't want to delete all the photos. And well, unfortunately, that alt text is not the same as the mm -hmm as the uh, file name. Uh, I'm going to get to alt text in just a moment, but the file name is the file name. So um, that's a conundrum a bit. If you already got all those images uploaded, it would be annoying to delete them and re-upload them, but hopefully with the file names are simply numbers. It's not so good, but if the file names do have at least one thing meaningful, that's better. And again, if it's just one post, but it has those 10 wrong file names, I wouldn't worry about it in the grand scheme of all your future blog posts and other SEO content that we talk about. Okay, so I have some options that I can add here. URL, which is the direct address to that photo. I cannot change that. That's internal. I have title. Title is the text that would appear when someone hovers their mouse over your picture. Have you seen that? When you put your mouse on top of a picture or a link, sometimes you get a simple pop-up that tells you something. Well, that's what title is. So here I can write uh, recipe of the month, snickerdoodle. That text will appear when someone hovers over my picture. It's, a, it's optional. Caption is also optional. Caption would be text that would appear below your picture. That's useful. It's optional but useful because then that text will appear right below the picture. It'll be usually formatted really nice right below your picture in a nice... sometimes they have a nice little <coughs> box and such depending on your theme. But um, caption will display on screen automatically. Title will display on screen when someone hovers over it. Alt text does not display on screen, but this is the one that I would say is required. The search engines also say this is required. Alt text is alternate text, and so this is part of the concept of accessibility. So you might be surprised to know that people that are completely blind can still go on the web. People that are completely blind can still buy something on Amazon.com or visit a website and enjoy the web. You might think, how can they do that if the web is so visual? I have to see that button to click on it. I have to see that text to read it. I have to see to move my mouse to do something. Well, people that are blind have either special hardware or software that will read to them what's on the screen. If you're blind, you can still hear, and so your computer will read to you. If I have a screen reader software, my computer would read to me, insert media, link, create gallery, link, featured image, link, insert tweet. And then I would have a special keyboard with more keys usually and special combinations that I've memorized. Okay, I want to open the fourth link, which it read to me was insert tweet. So on my keyboard I can easily do that. And the computer then assists people it makes your site accessible, it's going to read to them. No computer though, no software, no computer at Google is smart enough at the moment, however, to really tell you what a picture is. There are some pictures that after analyzing millions of them can tell you that's the Eiffel Tower, that's a cookie, but there's no way that it can tell you that's a family reunion of the Johnson family in 1983. There's no way a computer would know that ever. You can see, this is a group of people that are still using bell bottoms, but they won't know, they won't know anything about the picture. That's where the alt text comes in. What we type here will be read to the person. So I, however, would not use this space to write a paragraph. Johnson Family Reunion 1983, Uncle John is still wearing bell bottoms. I would not use that as a huge paragraph of text. I would use it as a concise sentence to explain what the what the picture is. Because think about it in terms of of your blind users. If I'm, if I'm selling this product of a cookie, I don't need to have a huge sentence explaining it. I'm just saying, you know, recipe of the month, snickerdoodle. So I can actually copy the title and the caption and the alt text to all be the same. That's fine. Like I would not write a whole paragraph in the caption. I suddenly have a huge paragraph under my picture. One sentence works. 
I don't want a paragraph in that little pop-up that happens from title, and I don't want the computer to read a paragraph to my blind users in bold text. And this is the one that's required. The search engines nowadays look at this and penalize you if you don't use the alt text. So if you haven't used alt text before, this is where you do it. We can always add alt text to any future pictures. We can go back to edit an existing picture and add the alt text. And again, it doesn't require a huge paragraph. One or two words that explain what this is is better than nothing. And that helps your SEO. Question? Right after I insert it, I'll show you, because I'm not quite done here yet, but try hovering your mouse over the picture and you should get a pencil. I should let you edit it again. And notice I've written them human readable. I've got spaces and capital letters and such. Sometimes in technology we have to write things computer readable, like the address over here, no spaces, no capitals. But on this other stuff here, that can be human readable. The last item here is, is another optional one. This one will not show on screen, depending on your theme. This will not show on screen. This will not be relevant to other accessibility features. This is more for you. As you start adding more and more pictures to your media folder in WordPress, you're going to see that one of the shortcomings of WordPress is that it doesn't manage your pictures very well. You upload a picture, you upload 10, you upload 40, and it keeps it all just in the media screen. I can't see it here, but on the left side I've got media right here. You cannot create folders, so I can't create a folder for all my recipes, and I can't create a folder for the family reunions year by year. I can't create folders in WordPress at the moment. Probably in the future version I can. We're on version 4 and they still haven't done it. So we have to either scroll to find our picture or search. We've got search built into our media library. And so we can search, and it'll search for title, caption, alt text, or description. So in the description, I can write a paragraph here. It's not going to be visible to my users, but this is for myself. Maybe here I can simply throw in some keywords for myself to find my keywords. Stock image. Snickerdoodle, Pixabay. You can write complete sentences, whatever, but this is really more to, for you to search for your own images. Now, however, if your theme displays the description of your picture, be careful, of course. That's not a good description for people to see. Then I've got attachment display settings. How would you like to display the picture? Currently, mine says left, so the picture will be on the left side of the screen. We have left, center, right, or none. Yeah. Well, those galleries really are to be displayed on your site. They're not to dis they're not to organize within your media. So you can put your alignment here. <laughs> Let me skip what link two is for a moment. Jump to size. I uploaded uh, a size of about twelve eighty. That might be too big for my design, my theme, and it might be too big and it pops out of the column. Let's say. So we've got various sizes that we can choose, thumbnail, medium, etc., different sizes. So let's say I chose to use a thumbnail, only 150 pixels, but I still want the ability for people to see the large, high-quality version. So if I select thumbnail and on link to select media file, that will make my thumbnail clickable. They can click on it and they'll see the original media size. So I don't have to design a thumbnail size and a large size in Photoshop, I can just upload the large size and WordPress will create the different sizes for me. However, you don't want to upload your raw J JPEGs right out of your camera. That's way too large. I don't want to upload the 2,000 pixel sized one, the 5,000 pixel sized one. 
This size here of 1280 is very good for most purposes, maximum size, either height or width. This one is landscape because the width is 1280. If they were tall, the height would be 1280. So I would say a good size is 1280 width or height and whatever the width or height becomes. Basically the largest dimension, 1280 width or height, doesn't matter. But if you're uploading a 2,000 pixel size one, a 3,000 pixel size one, you're going to slow down your site. Yes, WordPress will shrink it down to thumbnail size, but your 5 megapixel image is still on your site, taking up space, taking up download, bandwidth, and so forth. So I would still resize my pictures to about 1280, and then choose thumbnails, and it's not so heavy of a download. Pixabay. I think this particular one was medium. Pixabay calls a mediums, but it, I think it still says 1280. Mm -hmm. There's the extra large one, which is like 3000. You don't want that one. Yes. Yes, so you would want to probably edit your picture a little bit based on your theme and cut it down to so it's about 1280 so that it's not too much to download. Link to media file will open the original size, but we've also got attachment page, custom URL or none. So maybe we don't want the picture to be clickable. We just want it that size. That's it. So we can put link to none. We can put link to custom URL, and then we type in our own address here. So we can make a picture be an active link. When someone clicks on that picture, it goes elsewhere. Now that could go to some other person's website, or it could go to my own website. This, this is not quite easy for your own site. Uh, for example, victor.com slash blog slash uh, how to bake pies. So I need to know the address of my link of my own site or any other site I'm, site I'm linking to if I select custom URL. Maybe in a future version they will allow us to click a button to pick our own internal link. But for the moment you have to know the address. Um, just, you want, so um, it's just a stack. So, uh, and then um, attachment. It's. Uh, I haven't said attachment yet. It's external. I haven't said attachment yet. Ah, okay. I've said none and custom. That's the external one. Ah, okay. Media file shows you your picture, and media and attachment page also shows you your picture. The difference is, media file will only show the picture by itself on a plain white background. If you select attachment page, it'll show your picture part of your theme. So, as part of your theme. Attachment page will, will show a larger version of your picture with your theme in the background. And then simply media file will show your picture with a plain white background. Yeah. Yes. No, it's none of these. That's uh, usually based on the theme or a plugin. So it sounds like you recommend that we do a custom URL or doing something back to our own site. If um, if relevant. Maybe I don't have any other pictures about, I mean, any other blog posts about snickerdoodles, so I wouldn't. But if I do have other posts related to the picture, I could do that custom URL. It really depends. Maybe you're choosing, maybe your theme lets you show the full sized one really nicely. So I'll put full size and put no link. That works too. It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish and choose the right option. 
question is at home SEO purposes. I mean, I'm just thinking for people to stay on your site longer, like if they like, oh, maybe it's a different recipe for different cookies. Well, in my particular post, I put my picture as the last picture. So yeah, I might want to add a custom URL to another article. But what if I put my picture as like my second paragraph and I still have three more paragraphs? If I make that an active link to go elsewhere, I'm suddenly going to lose their attention on my current post. So there's a, there's a lot of things to think about, not super complicated with images, but after you've done all of that, you want to click Insert into Post. Now I've got a picture in my post, and I can preview it. There's, there's the caption. If I hover my mouse over it, my web browser should show it. If it doesn't, well, I've got the caption, I've got the alt text, this is an active clickable link. If I click on it, there it is, the large version of it. Even though I chose to show the large 1280 size, it still adhered to the size of my theme. That's not 1280. Once I click on it and see it on the plain white background attachment of the media file, that's 1280. That's the whole size. If I wanted something fancy that I click on it and within this screen it shows up and it fades in, it does all that cool stuff, that's going to be a, a theme, um, a theme feature or a plugin. And a, a plugin that you could look up is called Fancy Box. Fancy Box for WordPress. So that's going to be a plugin that lets you have those fancy boxes to display your picture. It lets you zoom in and zoom out and all of that. If you choose the gallery when we added a media and we chose create a gallery, it gives us more options to create a gallery somewhere. But that's something you can explore on your own media. And you want to have, usually I recommend at least one picture per post. You can do more, of course, but then you have to balance. Is it too visually busy? Is it too many pictures and is it downloading slowly? Maybe I've got a lot of pictures, but, it, but they're optimized so they download quickly, but then maybe it's too distracting to see too many pictures or they're not reading the text. Yeah. Well, you should be editing the title, not the caption. The caption is what would appear below the picture. The title is what should appear when you hover. And if it's not showing correctly, oh, the, title a, the title attribute, yes. Okay, so I've got a picture. As I said previously, we've got format. This is just an, another way to organize and categorize. <coughs> Standard works fine most of the time, but if your post needs to be organized with other, with other related posts, you can choose format. But then we've also got category and tag. So you want to make sure you don't have the uncategorized category and instead select the right category. You can have more than one. Remember, one to three. This is where we would attach it. We can have 40 categories, but I would say one to three categories actually attached to a post is good. Question. Can you say SEO Not good. Not that it's bad, 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 but it's not, it's not relevant enough. Of course, it's, it's blog content. It's in your blog screen. You should be more specific to see what kind of blog content. And where did you get the format? If you don't have format, that might have to do uh, up here on your screen options. Go to screen options, and it might be deactivated. 
and if it's not there available also, it might be a setting you have to activate within your WordPress settings somewhere. Use formats. So I'm going to use the cookies category. Maybe I thought of another one, so I can quickly add a new category here. And I didn't really set up tags on my other screen, because now that I've written it here now, I might have the idea. Okay, a, cat, a tag I'm going to use is arrow root flower add. Because I might use the arrow root tag on other recipes, cookies, cakes, pies, whatever. And all of those share that tag, but they're separate categories. Cookies, cakes, and pies. Category or a tag classic recipe. So I might I could do this as a category, but I want to organize all my cakes into a category, all my pies into a category, all my cookies into a category. And then I can mark some classic recipe cakes, classic recipe cookies, and classic recipe pies. Featured image, depending on your theme, might display a picture, or your theme might automatically take a picture that you've added to the post and display it. So sometimes you just have to say, well, what does this do? I'm going to add a category and a tag and a featured image, publish it, and then check my blog to see, oh, okay, now I see that the featured image displays here, and the photo displays there. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of detective work. What does this actually do? Like excerpt. excerpt. Excerpts are optional handcrafted summaries for your content that can be used in your theme. So this could be a description of your post, or it could be your first snippet that you wrote at the top, depending on your theme. My company, we have to always check with the theme, how does that actually work? Does the excerpt work? So usually I write a post, I put something in the excerpt, I publish it, and then I see, oh, okay, the excerpt is displaying, not visually, but it's part of the SEO, it's part of the meta description. Don't worry about trackbacks. Discussion, you can select allow comments, yes or no. Allow trackbacks and playbacks. Usually you want yes because we want to link to other websites to get links back. Slug is just the fancy name for the address, which is the same as up here. This address in the permalink, this specific part of it, the whole address is the permalink, but this particular ending of it right here is the slug. So another way to edit it is way down here. I hardly ever do because I just edit it at the top. If you have multiple authors, that is multiple users that can log in, they will be credited as an author. This is how the ghostwriting could happen. You could have other people log in with their own credentials to write something, but then they're going to change the author of their post to you so that you've got a ghostwriter. Well, we're running out of time, but what you want to do is look at the user's screen and then follow your users, add users, invite users, and so forth. WordPress can keep track of your revisions. This is very cool because it's in the cloud. Everything you do will be saved. Every time you save it or publish it or draft it, it will be saved. So if I don't like a direction my post is going, I could back up to what I did an hour ago under revisions. And if I've got comments, I can deal with comments here, approve them, deny them, whatever. Show likes, show sharing, and you usually want that. You want people to share, to give you likes. That's traffic. So after all of that work, then eventually uh, I'm going to click Update. And then that will and 
that will um, publish it for the whole world to see if I visit site and go to the home page. There's Snickerdoodle. Mine shows my tags like this, arrowroot flower, category, uh, classic recipes. It doesn't show the categories anywhere, and there's no button that says read more. It's not obvious. I have to click on the actual link, and that'll read more. Yes? Do you need to then, within your text, say, click on the uh, heading to um, read more? Yeah, and that's annoying, so I would just choose another theme. Um, there's many reasons I don't like this theme, so I can just change it. Yes? When you have a custom URL for a photo, is there a way where you can ask that it opens up in another page instead of staying on the same page? Uh, yes. Let's see. Okay, so let's say you've you've put your picture on your post. You're going to go back to edit it by clicking the pencil and then you have these options and you're going to look under advanced options here on the bottom left and there it is, open link in a new window. Okay, well I've got to wrap it up now actually and unfortunately we won't have time for lab time. This is obviously a big topic and uh, we've covered everything I wanted to pretty much and it's all on the checklist still. What we're going to do is I'm going to wrap up the class, and when we come back next time, we're going to see how our time is. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about WordPress. I do want to talk about Tumblr, because uh, it could be a useful blogging platform for you. But we'll see when we come back next time. We'll, just, we'll decide how we might alter the class and such. Last question, because we've got to wrap it up. On number eight, it says, when setting experiments, you know, you need to make them open in your own tab. Did you come out and do that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying right here. Open link in a new window or tab. So if it's going over to some external link to someone else, we want to turn on the button to, to make it open in a separate window or tab. And that was just for the images, but for anything, you would do that? Yeah, you would also activate the ability to okay. open a new window. Thank you. So hopefully you got what you needed today. I'm going to upload the videos, of course. If you want a copy of them, send me an email. Uh, we're just going to have like four minutes of lab time, and then I've got to get, get going because I've got other classes to work with.